Tule, tule moga digima. Tule o, tule moga masigi. Iyo jaho, ki mere onyozo. Eme giya tule moga digima. hey guys welcome back to our channel how you're doing thank you for coming to watch our video i really do appreciate each and every one of you if you're new here my name is love a nigerian italian youtuber based in italy with a family we we'll bring you contents of our lifestyle to entertainment thank you please do as well to subscribe and hit the notification bell that way you'll know when we put up a new video okay guys it's been so long I've not done a sit-down video. I actually didn't plan to do today's sit-down video, but something came up that I needed to address. I just got off work. I'm tired. My kids are in the sitting room. Hobby is in the sitting room. I just wanted to quickly make this video and, you know, move on. So, guys, do you know that feeling you get when you see something that, you know, you watch on TVs? You know, things that you see happen in dramas and you see them happen to you in real life. There's a kind of surreal feeling that you get from it. So over a decade ago, when I was still married to my ex-husband, after we got married, he told me to like, you know, register in a salon where I can learn how to make, you know, a few hairstyles that can actually fetch me money by the time I move over here, over here in Italy. So he brought up the issue of, okay, when you're here, you don't understand the language and you're at home, you can actually make some people's hair and it can fetch you a few errors. So I gladly went and registered. Now, now this particular salon that I registered, I also got the Mac friends there. I met Ifi and EJ. So I will just give them this. These are not their original names. The reason why I will not call them by their real name is because they actually follow me on YouTube here and... I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I really wanted to talk about this because the both of them will get to watch this video and they will know what I think about this whole mess that they've created. So, Ify and EJ happens to be, you know, my favorites. Like, we, we flowed better than every other person, probably because they are evil like me. So, um, so Ify is a church girl like me because i'm a church girl so while we're working and learning work at this my mother's salon every wednesdays i usually go to wednesday prayer you know at the church that is behind my mother's store and we usually go together come back together so we're actually closer while ej ej is not a church girl ej was this outgoing kind of person ej didn't put church as you know at the forefront the way we did so ej is a beautiful outgoing girl men were flocking around her and she was chopping men's money i will not lie several times she has gone out with men and came back to the shop and we followed her and chopped everything she brought back so moving on there's this boy called emeka emeka lives in lagos but he's a customer to my madam Usually, Emeka will leave Lagos and go to Onisha and go and buy, you know, Vons attachments. He buys it in box and he takes it to Lagos to sell. I don't know why he does that, but I think, I don't know. I just understand his movements, but that was what he was doing. He would move from Lagos to Onisha to buy these stuff. And while going back to Lagos, he would stop at my mother's shop and sell some of these things to my mother. Since my mother cannot go to Onisha herself, so my mother would buy these things from him. And then he will take the rest of, you know, his wares and go to Lagos. So, when <laughs> when this boy was coming to supply these things to my madam, this boy was liking EJ, that is the outgoing type. While Ify, the church girl, was liking this boy. I don't know if you get EJ that has so many men flocking around her, was not interested in Emeka, but Emeka was interested in her. And if he that is this church girl was interested in Emeka. Now what then happened? Me, after a while, I got a visa and I moved to Italy and we sort of lost contact and everything. You know, during those days, there was no WhatsApp thing and everything for you to stay in contact with people. There was just Facebook. And me, I'm terrible at keeping in contact with people. But a few years later, we got back in touch from Facebook and we're writing a few times, you know. Once in a while, we we'll say hello to each other. I got to know that if he later got married to somebody in the UK and moved to the UK, 
while EJ remained in Nigeria and later got married to Emeka. <laughs> I don't know how it later happened though. I don't know how EJ later went and settled for Emeka because she had so many men, rich men flocking around her. But alas, it was Emeka she chose at the end of the day. Now, what, I, what we didn't know then was that if he was angry with Emeka for choosing <laughs> EJ over her, I don't understand. If he visited Nigeria and somehow, somehow came in contact with Emeka, and while they were just talking, flowing as old friends and blah, 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 this if he came out and told Emeka, you, you see your life, at the end of the day, look at it was... A shower you settled down with. If you went and opened the mother said, hmm, who doesn't know EJ during those days? EJ was all over men. Men were flocking around her. She was changing men the way she changes her rapper. She was this, she was that. She went and added salt, pepper, blah, and sold all this ugly negative thoughts to Emeka. Now, Emeka, the father he was living in Lagos, didn't know all these things about Ijoma. Now, what then happened? Emeka went home and somehow, somehow started having issues with his wife and then went, came up and said those things and even said he was doubting if he's the father of their two children. And in fact, the thing shy exploded and the next thing they are contacting me on WhatsApp. First of all, it was EJ that contacted me and said, please, oh, uh, help me save my marriage. Oh, Emeka is going to contact you. Emeka said, after Ify, told him everything if he said he should come and ask me to confirm that we all knew <laughs> that he should come and ask me to confirm that Ijoma his wife used to be a wrong girl or should we call whatever you know well when EJ contacted I said I have not heard from any of them I've not heard from Ify and I've not heard from your husband the maker and I said I don't even think he maker will come to me to come and ask me such a question because that's an absurd question why will you come and ask in fact who cares we've all got past we've all got secrets you know I don't know it's not everything about my life or my past life that I told my husband of today. I don't think those things are necessary obviously if there are things that you know you did in the past that are kind of like that will affect your marriage or affect your future or your health and you know your life partner needs to know about it, that it's important that your life partner knows about it you need to obviously tell them but if this um how many body counts you have or who and who you 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 slept with or you went out with i don't think those things are necessary so but even if ej had not contacted me and the maker had contacted me there was no way i would have gone and said ah yeah we used to know ej as so so and so or whatever you know, there was no way I would have. In fact, I would have even shunned him. I'm like, oh God, please, before you, did you meet, did you meet your wife as a virgin? Mm -hmm. Didn't you date? Didn't you used to have girlfriends before you ever married this girl? I don't think that guy would be so courageous enough to come and meet me in my DM and come and tell me, please come and tell me about my wife's past. It's not possible. In fact, why would you even still be suspecting her now? Is EJ doing something now that is making her look guilty? I don't understand because even if you've had many body counts in the past and you're not married and you've carried your legs and you, it's inside your marriage and you're not stretching it outside anymore, there's really no reason why you should be bothered, like you should feel threatened that your husband is saying that he's not sure those children are yours unless you continued, you know, with one leg outside your marriage. That is when you have to be bothered. So, EJ, this is me telling you, if you know you've never cheated on your husband you've never done anything outside your marriage i don't really think you have anything to shake or to fear about in fact everybody have got past everybody have got oh should, let me not say everybody most people have got skeletons in their cupboard there's nothing you did wrong that you have to be ashamed of or afraid of as long as you know your husband is the father of those kids chillas ne you don't have anything to worry and so if he, <laughs> Ne, you that we were looking we were looking up to as the Mary Amaka of our time, you that we were looking up to as the church girl, the, the girl that that has the heart of uh, the heart of God. In fact, Jesus Christ's uh, favorite baby girl went and did such a thing. You are in a marriage. Does that mean that you're still so pained that this guy chose IJ over you that 
you went to the extent and you lost control and you went and started saying rubbish about our friend. I don't really get it. Does it mean that after all these years, it's been over a decade, you're still pained? You're still jealous? Does that mean you're not happy in your home and you still want this guy? Because for someone who is already married, you've moved on with your life, why would you want to break somebody else's marriage? How is it EJ's fault that they chose her over you? I don't get it. And you a church girl, a Christian girl for that matter. This is an act of wickedness. This is witchcraft for crying out loud. You are a witch in the church. You, you, you have a devilish heart. You, you were bold enough to say such a thing to a man. And you said you should come and ask me to confirm. No, Jade Atokwage. I fear you, honestly. You know this thing they say that the heart of man is desperately wicked. You are the pure definition of that particular sentence. Your heart is wicked. Nay, you are wicked. Nay, you need to ask God for forgiveness. And you need to go and settle this marriage that you've put on a brick of, you know, whatever. You've just done a damage that I don't want to say is un unforgivable. Well, me, the kind of person that I am, <laughs> even something that is less than that one, if you do it to me, to forgive you, eh? Oh my God. People are wicked. This just brought a song to my head. For those that are not evil, that song simply says, check calm now. This evil that you did to somebody else, if it's done to you, will you like it? Will you be happy about it? This evil thought, this evil act that you just showed to somebody else, if it's done to you, will you appreciate it? Will you, will you be happy over it? Why are you doing Why did you do this? I, I don't get it. This only happens in the movies. This only happens, this is, this is Nollywood drama. Why would you allow devil to use you like this? This song, I actually heard it so many years ago from a Nigerian movie. But this thing you just did now just refreshed my memory and brought back this song to my head. I'm in a state of mind where I I don't even know what to think about friendship anymore. I've lived in this country for so many years without, you know, um, drawing so close to people. And sometimes I miss having friends. Sometimes I miss having somebody I can actually share things with because life can actually be you know, quite lonely sometimes. You know, there are times that it's not just your husband that you want or you need around you. You just want a, a girlfriend that you can share things with, talk things over with, you know, laugh and stuff like that. Just onboarding some of your problems too. But when you see what friends are doing to friends, man, people are not nice. Honestly, people don't take you the way you take, the way you take them. And out of nowhere, after over a decade, if he came up with this bomb that is now burning the house of somebody else. People are terrible. People can be terrible. So if you, if you watch this video, I wish I know you will watch because you've always come to me on my WhatsApp to come and say, nee, I like your videos or whatever. I'm highly disappointed at you. And there's a way that karma works. If you don't go back and repair this thing, karma will come for you. Karma is real. I'm telling you that you might be angry that I'm saying what I'm saying now, but karma is real. Karma is real and karma will come for you. Go ask for forgiveness and go and repair what you spoiled. IJ, I don't really think you have anything to worry about. I'm then. telling you boldly in front of camera. It's not everything about me, my past and my husband knows about. It's not everything. The ones I think are important are the ones I told him. Okay, so you're not the only one that didn't tell, you know, their, their husband about their past. Excuse me, I'm even one of the people that will tell you that it's not everything you tell your husband because if you go about telling your husband everything, when you people will fight because you people will fight too. When you people will fight, they will use those things against you. I can testify to that. 
it happened between me and my ex-husband. Everything I ever told him about my past. He used it against me when we started quarreling. So now you did nothing wrong. And how many people, when they want to get married, will go and start telling their husband, Ah, I slept with 20 men before I met you. I slept with 10 men. I slept with 5 men. Who is interested in that? And come to think of it, men are not even interested to know these things. Men don't want to know these things. If you tell them, my oven has gone off again. If you tell them, they will start seeing you in a different way. Even if they met you as, as, as not a virgin, they know obviously the fact that you're no longer a virgin means that you've gone down there with a man. They don't even want to know who that person is. The ones that will ask you who this virgin do, they have skoi skoi. The one that will come and ask you how many people have you slept with before we met, they have skoi skoi. And you should shun that person immediately they ask you such a question. You shouldn't answer such a dirty question. Okay? So if they ask you that kind of question, tell them, uh, how many do you think I've slept with? If they say, Maybe three, four. Tell them like, yes, yes, it's three, four. Say yes, it's three, four. Don't come and increase the number and say five. See, the day you will quarrel, he will tell you, you have uh, slept with how many men before I met? They will use it against you. So, you've done nothing wrong. I pray the good Lord um, sustains you, sustains your marriage, and, you know, keep you guys in peace. And make a man. And not be a man. Forget this long, long talks that... That is up and down, whatever. Nobody will not get past. Face your family, face your wife, face your children. Move forward in life and forget all these side talks. Eh? Jealousy can spoil people's things. Je jealousy can spoil your marriage if you're not careful. Eh? Concentrate on your family and build your home. Be wise. Be wise. Anyway, guys, this was just what I wanted to share with you all. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on my next one. Be wise. Stay woke.